introduction. So long as authority inspires a, a confusion and absurdity enhance conservative tendencies in society. Firstly, because clear and log logical thinking leads to accumulation of knowledge, of which the progress of the natural sciences provides the best example, and the advance of knowledge so sooner or later undermines the traditional order. Confused thinking, on the other hand, leads nowhere in particular and can be indulged indefinitely without producing any impact upon the world. Stanislav Andreski The story of this book begins with hugs. For some years, we have been surprised and distressed by the intellectual trends in certain precincts of American academia. Both sectors of the humanities and the social sciences seem to have adopted a philosophy that we shall call, for want of a better term, postmodernism. A an intellectual current characterized by the more or less ex explicit rejection of the rationalist tradition of the Enlightenment, by theoretical discourses disconnected from any empirical test, and by a cognitive and cultural relativism that regards science as nothing more than a narration, a myth, or a social construction, among many others. To respond to this phenomenon, one of us, Sokal, decided to try an unorthodox and admittedly uncontrolled experiment, submit to a fashionable American cultural studies journal, Social Text, a parody of the type of work that has proliferated in recent years, to see whether they would publish it. The article, entitled Trans Transrection the Boundaries Toward the Transformative Hermeneutics of Quantum Gravity, is a chock full of absurdities and blatant non -security securities. In addition, it asserts an extreme form of cognitive relativism. After mocking the old fashioned dogma that there exists an, an external world, whose properties are independent of any individual human being and indeed by of humanity as a whole. It proclaims categorically that physical reality, no less than social reality, is at bottom a social and linguistic construct. By a series of stunning leaps of luggage, it arrives at the conclusion that the P of Euclid and the G of Newton, formerly thought to be constant and universal, are now perceived and in their ineluctable historicity and the put putative observer becomes fatally decentered, disconnected from any epistemic link to a space-time point that can no longer be defined by geometry alone. The rest is in the same way, and yet the article was accepted and published. Worst, it was published in a special issue of social text devoted to rebutting the criticism leveled against postmodernism and social constructivism by several distinguished scientists. For the editors of social text, it was hard to imagine a more radical way of shooting themselves in the foot. Sokol immediately revealed the hoax, provoking a firestorm of reaction in both the popular and academic press. Many researchers in the humanities and social sciences wrote to Sokol, sometimes very movingly, to thank him for what he had done and to express their own rejection of the postmodernist and relativist tendencies dominating large parts of their disciplines. One student felt that the money he had earned to fin finance his studies had been spent on the clothes of an emperor who, as an in the fable, was naked. Another wrote that he and his colleagues were thrilled by the parody, but asked, asked that his sentiments be held in confidence because, although he wanted to help change his discipline, he could do so only after securing a permanent job. But both all the fuss about media hype notwithstanding, the mere fact the parody was published proves little in itself. At most, it reveals something about the intellectual standards of one trendy journal. More interesting conclusions can be derived, however, by examining the content of the parody. On close inspection, one sees that the parody was constructed around quotations from eminent French and American intellectuals about the alleged philosophical and social implications of mathematics and the 
natural sciences. The passage may be absurd or meaningless, but they are nonetheless authentic. In fact, Sokol's only contribution was to provide a glue, the luggage of which is admittedly whimsical, to join these quotations together and praise them. The others in question form a veritable pantheon of contemporary French theory. Gilles Deleuze, Jacques Derrida, Félix Guattari, Luce Irigaray, Jacques Lacan, Bruno Latour, Jean-Francis Lyotard, Michel Serres, and Paul Virilio. The city citations also include many prominent American academics in cultural studies and related fields, but these others are often, at least in part, disciplines of our commentators on the French masters. Since the quotations included in the par parody were rather brief, Sokol subsequently assembled a series of longer texts to illustrate these others' handling of the natural sciences, which he circulated among his scientific colleagues. Their reaction was a mixture of hilarity and dismay. They could hardly believe that anyone, much less renowned intellectuals, could write such nonsense. However, when a non-scientist read the material, they pointed out the need to explain, in lay terms, exactly why the cited pas passages are absurd or meaningless. From that moment, the two of us worked together to produce a series of analyses and commentaries on the text resulting in this book. What we intend to show The goal of this book is to make a limited but original contribution toward the critique of the admittedly nebulous zeitgeist that we have called postmodernism. We make no claim to analyze postmodernist uh, thought in general, rather our aim is to draw attention to a relatively little known aspect, namely the repeated abuse of concepts and terminology coming from mathematics and physics. We, also, uh, we shall also analyze certain confusions of thought that are frequent in postmodernist writings and that bear on either the content or the philosophy of the natural sciences. The word abuse here denotes one or more of the following characteristics. Holding forth at length on scientific theories about which one has, at best, an exceedingly hazy idea. The most common tactic is to use scientific or pseudoscientific terminology without bothering much about what the words actually mean. Two, importing concepts from the natural sciences into the humanities or social sciences without giving the slightest conceptual or empirical justification. If a biologist wants, wants to apply in, in her research elementary notions of mathematical topology, set theory or differential geometry, she will be asked, asked to give some explanation. A vague analogy will not be taken very seriously by her colleagues. Here, by contrast, we learn from Lacan that the structure of the neuri neurotic subject is exactly the torus. It is no less than reality itself. CVP20. From Christopher, that poetic language can be theorized in terms of the cardinality of the continuum. And from Baudrillard, that modern modern war takes place in a non Euclidean space, all without explanation. 3. Displaying a superficial erudition by shamelessly throwing around a technical terms in a context where they are completely irrelevant. The goal is not that, to impress and, above all, to intimidate the non-scientist reader. Even some academic and media commentators, commentators fall into the trap. Roland Barthes is impressed by the precision of Julia Kristeva's work, and Lamonda admires the erudition of Paul Virilio. 4. Manipulating phrases and sentences that are, in fact, meaningless. Some of these others exhibit a veritable intoxication with words combined with a superb indifference to their meaning. These others speak with a self-assurance that far outstrips their scientific competence. Lacan boasts of using the most recent development in topology and later ask whether he has taught anything to Einstein. They imagine, perhaps, that they can exploit the prestige of the natural sciences in order to give their own discourse a veneer of rigor. And they seem confident that no one will notice their misuse of scientific concepts. 
No one is going to cry out that the king is naked. Our goal is precisely to say that the king is naked and the queen too. But let us be clear, we are not attacking philosophy, the humanities or the social sciences in general. On the contrary, we feel that these files uh, are of the utmost importance and we want to warn those who work in, in them, especially students, against some manifest causes charlatanism. In particular, we want to deconstruct the reputation that certain texts have of being difficult because the ideas in them are so profound. In many cases, we shall demonstrate that if the text seem in incomprehensible, it is for the excellent reason that they mean precisely nothing. There are many different degrees of abuse. At one end, one finds ex extrapolations of scientific concepts beyond their domain of validity that are erroneous but for subtle, subtle reasons. At the other end, one finds numerous texts that are full of scientific words but entirely devoid of meaning. And there is, of course, a continuum of discourses that can be situated somewhere between these two extremes. Although we shall concentrate in this book on the most manifest abuses, we shall also briefly address some less obvious confusions concerning cause theory. Let us stress that there is nothing shameful in being ignorant or calculus or quantum mechanics. What we are criticizing is the pretension of some celebrated intellectuals to offer profound thoughts on complicated subjects that they understand, at best, at the level of popularizations. At this point, the reader may naturally wonder, do these abuses arise from conscious fraud, self-deception, or perhaps a combination of the two? We are unable to offer any categorical answer to this question due to lack of publicly available evidence. But more importantly, we must confess that we do, we do not find this question of great interest. Our aim is here is to stimulate a critical attitude, not merely towards certain, certain individuals, but towards a part of intelligentsia, both in the United States and the Europe, that has tolerated and even encouraged this type of discourse. Yes, but... Before proceeding any further, further, let us answer some of the objections that will no doubt occur to the reader.